recruitment for almost 15 years. And I can tell you that when I interview candidates, I can tell they did not prepare enough. And the ones that do prepare, well, they mostly prepare the exact same way. But in today's video, I'm going to give you a preparation secret that is going to elevate you and make you better than most of the other candidates you're going to compete against in your next interview. Let's go. Now look, if you're preparing for an interview, you definitely want to do some of the normal stuff. Look at the job description and familiarize yourself with it. You want to practice common interview questions. That's really important. You want to do your research on the company. Know a little bit about them, know a bit about the people who are going to be interviewing you, know about what the company does, a little bit about their history. All those things are really important. Um, and I have a ton of videos on how to do those things properly. But one of the things people don't practice doing that they really should is storytelling. One of the reasons storytelling is really powerful is that if you can tell a truly compelling story, you will become more memorable. And if you're more memorable, you'll have a greater chance of getting the job. Additionally, you're going to stand out and be different. They're going to understand that you had compelling stories, they're going to be leaning in, and they will certainly remember your interview compared to others. Additionally, if you prepare good stories, they're going to be able to answer a variety of different interview questions. That's truly the power of stories is that if you familiarize yourself with them, not only is it good to deliver compelling, effective stories, but you can then use those stories to answer a variety of interview questions, thusly preparing you better to begin with. Now, what I want you to do when we're talking about storytelling, it's really important that you pick out what I call five to six hero stories. Now, hero stories are stories that they're things you've accomplished in your career and they're impressive things. And they're the type of things where you're just hoping someone asks you an interview question so that you can share those things, right? So what I tell people to do is look at your career and look at every single stop you've been at. And what I want you to do is pick out one to three really impressive things that you did in each one of those places. Now, these are things that should be really powerful stories that if you were telling this, um, you know, if you met up for uh, a networking lunch with someone and it happened in the next six months, this is the thing you'd want to share them about. How's your job going? Oh, it's going pretty good. In fact, recently I led a project and blah, 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 right? They're impactful stories that would be powerful in an interview setting. So what I want you to do is think about what are the five to six things or one to three different things um, per stop in my career. Now, obviously, if you've had 15 stops, don't you have to have 45. I think you probably don't need any more than seven or eight in an interview. Now, the next thing that I want you to do is after you think, okay, what are these, let's just say five to six hero stories that I have? What I want you to do is write them out. Write out the story so you can start familiarizing yourself with the detail. One of the places people mess up in interviews is they've got good examples, but they don't remember enough of the details so they can't articulate the impact when they're answering questions. So in familiarizing yourself with these questions ahead of time, you wanna write down what happened. Um, now, the way you wanna write these down is you wanna use the STAR technique. The STAR technique is situation, task, action, result. Now that's a framework people use for answering behavioral interview questions, but it can actually be quite effective when you're talking about building a framework for sharing stories of your career. So they work great for hero stories. So think about your five to six hero stories, write down, um, you know, what was the situation where you were working? What was the task you were tasked with completing, right? What was the action you took? This can be quite large, right? The actions might be a little bit larger than some of the other sections. And result, what was the outcome? So what you wanna do is you wanna actually chronicle your hero stories, have them written out, familiarize yourself with them so you are comfortable articulating them in an interview. Now, the thing about these is you wanna make sure you don't give too much detail when it comes to sharing it, right? You also wanna make sure you sound authentic. You don't wanna to sound too rehearsed and these should take anywhere from like 45, I would say to 150 seconds, right? You, these shouldn't be something where you write down so much details and then it takes you five minutes to walk them through. That's gonna to be too long. You wanna say, hey, a minute and a half, two minutes, two and a half minutes tops. That is a good amount of time to be able to share one of these hero stories. Now, if you really wanna elevate this and make it a really effective story, you need to quantify your impact. And what do I mean by that? Quantify your impact means, was there some sort of value you can associate with what you did, right? So if your project was leading a Kaizen event, and over the course of this event, it's a lean event, right? It's continuous improvement type thing where they're trying to look for inefficiencies and drive uh, efficiencies into a business process or, or something like that. Um, during this Kaizen event, it lasted X amount of time and you were able to save your company X amount of dollars. That's the information there. And this is really powerful because it makes your example real and it allows the hiring manager to imagine what you might be able to do for their team. Seeing what you've done for other teams, seeing what you've done for other organizations, listening to your hero story example, and then having it be effectively uh, quantified 
really powerful. So that's another thing that you need to do. If you truly want to elevate these stories, there needs to be some sort of cost savings, dollar amount, efficiency that you can articulate to them so they understand, ah, okay, there was a serious impact here. Now those stories should help make you a much more effective interviewer. Another thing that's really important for your career is choosing when you should or should not partner with a recruiter. Recruiters probably reach out to you all the time on LinkedIn, but there's a massive difference between a great recruiter and a not so great recruiter. And in this video, I tell you how to tell which is which. So I'm done here. I'll see you over there.